This is one of multiple LAN or local area network troubleshooting videos. In this video, we have four switches running in GNS3. Switch one and switch two are configured as layer three switches. Switch three and switch four are configured as layer two switches. So I could change the symbol as an example to indicate that that's a layer two switch. However, these four switches are running iOS V layer two. And what I've done is simply disable IP routing on switch three and switch four. So we have four switches in the topology and two iOS V routers, router one and router two acting as PCs. This is a very simple topology where we have a core and an access layer. Typically you would connect the core to the access layer using cross connects. I'm not gonna do that in this troubleshooting video. Have a look in my CCNA course, which is linked below for a more complex topology running HSRP, optimized spanning tree, redundancy between the core and the access layer and multiple other options. But this network will suffice for our basic troubleshooting. So now let's assume that a new hire has made some configuration changes on the network and users are complaining about network connectivity issues. You've been told that this user 10121 in VLAN 2 is unable to ping this user that has a PC with IP address 10.1.3.2 in VLAN 3. You've been told that switch three is connected to switch one as follows. Switch one is connected to switch two and switch two is connected to switch four. But as Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. And what I like to say is don't trust anything that you've been told about a network until you've checked it yourself. So in our topology, router one is acting as PC1, show IP interface brief, shows us the IP address on the gigabit interface, that looks right. The IP address looks right, subnet mask looks right. Let's see if we can ping 10.1.3.2, which is the IP address of router two, acting as PC2. Okay, so the ping is failing. We don't seem to be able to ping that device. So that piece of information is true. Show IP route shows us no routes in the routing table, but it shows us that the default gateway is set to 10.1.2.254. Now that's because IP routing has been disabled on this router. In this topology, we've got router one acting as a PC. So when IP routing is disabled, this is what the routing table looks like. The default gateway has been configured on the PC, so that's good. Let's check if we can ping the default gateway. Yes, we can. Now, where is the default gateway? We could try and telnet to the default gateway. And let's try and telnet to the right IP address. So the device is there, but we told that a password is required, but none is set. So hopefully the default gateway in this topology is either switch one or switch two, which are the core layer three switches. So here's switch one, show IP interface brief. We can see that VLAN one, VLAN two and VLAN three have an IP address configured and that's the IP address on VLAN two. So this should be the device that the PC is pinging. I'll do a debug IP ICMP on that switch and get the PC to ping the default gateway. Now you need to be careful with debugging in a real world environment. Here, because we're studying for the CCNA, we can simply enable any debug command because that'll help you learn the debugs that are available. But in the real world, be careful with simply enabling a debug, especially on a core device. You may get so much output on the console that you can't read anything, 
or in a very bad situation, the device may fall over. So we don't want that. So in the real world, be careful with debugging. Okay, so the pings do arrive on this default gateway, so that's good. I'm gonna turn off IP domain lookup in the lab here to make things happen quicker. And then what we'll do is trace 10.1.3.2, which should be PC2 in our topology. Let's see how far it gets. So it gets to the default gateway, which we've now determined is switch one. So what we should do is update the documentation. So we could say that these are the IP addresses on the VLANs of that switch. That once again can be seen on switch one by using the show IP interface brief command. And there they are once again. So the trace route shows us that the traffic gets to the default gateway, but then doesn't go anywhere else. Let's check if PC2 can ping its default gateway. Now a test I like to do is to make sure that the local device can ping the other VLAN of the default gateway. So in other words, this PC is in VLAN two, it's in subnet 10120, and I'm checking that it can ping the subnet of the device that we're trying to go to but this is the IP address of the default gateway in that VLAN. In other words, we've proven that inter-VLAN routing is working on the layer three switch. But now let's check the connectivity of PC2. Can it get to its default gateway? So this is router two acting as PC2, show IP interface brief. IP address looks right per the diagram. Subnet mask looks right. Now that information is once again not shown in the diagram. So we'd wanna add that somewhere. And you may wanna add that on individual devices or make a note somewhere that the subnets have a slash 24 mask. Show IP route shows us the default gateway of PC2. So can it ping its default gateway? No, it can't. So there's something wrong either here or here or here. Let's have a look at switch four. Switch four is the local access switch. Show IP interface brief. It has an IP address of 10114. Can it ping switch one in VLAN one? Yes, it can. Show IP route. Default gateway is 10.1.1.254. Can it ping 10.1.3.254? Yes, it can. Can it ping the PC in VLAN 3? No, it can't. So this switch can ping the default gateway. Inter VLAN routing is working on the default gateway, but it can't ping this PC. Traffic from this switch to this PC would have to traverse to here to get to the default gateway, and then it would have to come back again. Let's confirm the ports on switch four. So firstly, show IP interface brief. Let's confirm that interfaces are up, all interfaces look up, including gigabit zero one. That interface is up, gigabit zero zero is up, which is the link to the core network. Pings did work previously, so, so we have an indication that this interface is already up and working. Show interface trunk. There's a trunk to the core on gigabit zero, that looks good. Let's have a look at the gigabit zero one interface. So show interface gigabit zero one switch port. This interface should be in VLAN three. Can you see the problem in this output? Interface name is gigabit01. It's enabled as a switch port. Administrative mode is dynamic auto. It's currently acting as a static access port. So dynamic trunk protocol or DTP 
did not negotiate to form a trunk. So DTP is on, but there wasn't a switch to negotiate trunking with. Notice the problem. Access mode VLAN is one. Show run interface gigabit zero one. This port is not in VLAN three. Interface gigabit zero one is currently in VLAN one. So switch port access VLAN three. Show interface gigabit zero one switch port. Port is now an access port in VLAN three. Show run interface gigabit zero one. There's our configuration. Let's check if the local switch can ping that PC. At the moment, it still can't. It may take a while for spanning tree and other protocols to converge. So you may just need to wait a bit before you assume that there's a problem. But spanning tree at this point looks good. So show CDP neighbors. We can see that router two is connected to gigabit zero one using gigabit zero zero. Show interface gigabit zero one switch port confirms that this port is in VLAN three. So let's go back onto the PC and check if it can ping its default gateway. It can now. So once again, you may just have to wait a little bit before you assume that your change hasn't made any difference. Can it ping router one acting as PC one? Yes, it can. So it looks like we've solved the problem. We could trace to the PC, which didn't work before. That now works. So previously, when we traced to 10132, it failed at the default gateway, but now it's working. And we could do a ping to prove it and do a debug on the side to prove that the traffic arrives. So that was an example of how to troubleshoot a local area network. It can sometimes be complicated to troubleshoot a layer two issues, but remember to check your interfaces, check your VLANs, check your encapsulations. In other videos, I will show you other problems that you may encounter and need to troubleshoot in this topology. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.